Hey friends, good morning. Hope you're having a great start to this beautiful day. I'm actually sitting here in Stamford, Connecticut at the Simcha of my nephews, Bar Mitzvah. Outdoors, it's a beautiful place. We were here for Shabbos celebrating and then we got the devastating news after Shabbos of the passing of Rabbi, Chief Rabbi, Lord Jonathan Sachs, one of the greatest leaders, thinkers, orators, authors the Jewish people possessed in this generation. And it's a sad and painful loss at the age of 72. You imagine all that he still could have accomplished as he was, but we know that his legacy will continue through the work, through his books, through his teachings, through his ideas, through his love for humanity, through his love for the Jewish people. And God willing, you will carry it on. But I wanted to dedicate my Torah thought today to Rabbi Sachs. So this week's Torah portion is Chaye Sarah. We read about the passing of Sarah. But the portion, the first verse tells us about how Sarah lived 127 years. And the second verse, it already tells us of her passing and how Abraham mourns her and eulogizes her and buys a plot in Hebron in the cave of Machpelah for her to be buried. And the rabbis all ask, and the rabbi speaks about it at length, why is the Torah portion called Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah, if it speaks and tells us about it, her death, her passing, the next generation. The first verse tells us about how she lived only 127 years and then she passed away. And immediately after, we read about her burial. And we read about Rebecca, who becomes the new matriarch. So why does it call the life of Sarah? And the answer may be in the Haftorah. The Haftorah this week starts at the Book of Kings, which is the life of King Solomon and the, his kingship that takes us all the way till the splitting of the Jewish people and the northern kingdom going into exile. The book of Samuel, which precedes it, speaks about King Saul and speaks about King David and King David's life. So naturally, this book being the book that connects the life of Solomon to the life of David and Saul begins with a little bit of the ending of King David. And what does it say? David King David became old. He wasn't the same electrifying as he was before. He wasn't the same strong warrior. Suddenly he was becoming old. And in a certain way he was becoming not insignificant, but he was at home. And the world around him was evolving and revolving. And he had a son named Adoniyahu. Adoniah was very strong and handsome and tall, and Adoniah wanted to be the new king. And he realized this was the time while King David was still alive to cement the kingship for himself. And he got to him, Yoab, the general of King David, who was David's nephew, and one of the great Eviatar, one of the great priests. And he started gathering people, and he made a big feast and celebration to come out to the people to announce that he was the king, he was the heir to King David's throne. Nathan, the, the prophet, who was the one who prophesied that King Solomon would become the king, Bathsheba's son, who King David promised would, realize what happened, and together with Bathsheba went to speak to King David. And Bathsheba pleaded, didn't you promise me this would happen? And look what's going on. And King David immediately takes the action to cement King Solomon's kingship in the future, and at that moment she screams out, Bathsheba calls out, Yechi Adoni Melech David Laola, may the King David live forever. And the question of course is, how real is that? How cynical is that? Here she's coming to speak to David about him passing the throne on to King Solomon. And in fact, in the next verses, right after this happens. They anoint King Solomon and they say, Yechi Adoni HaMelech Shlomo, let the King Solomon live. So how could it be that Bathsheba, as she's planning the transfer of power and as she's celebrating her son, should come and say, Yechi HaMelech Adoni David Laola, may King David live forever. She could have said, may he live. But what does forever mean? How cynical is that? And the answer the rabbis give and the rabbi speaks about at length is that no, you know, Woody Allen always says, people ask him if he wants to live on after he passes through his movies and through his ideas. He says, no, I'm happily, I, I much prefer to just live in my apartment, not through my ideas. 
But the reality is that Bacheva realized that King David can't live forever. We can't live in our apartment forever. The way the world goes is that life is temporary. But she knew that King David will continue to live forever through his ideas, through his, through his morality, through his serving Hashem. Who was King David? He was a servant of Hashem. And if King Solomon, who was the natural heir to his ideas, to his philosophy, to his love for Judaism, to his dedication to Hashem, if he would take over and he would become the king, then yes, King David would live forever if King Solomon became the king. And that's why she said, and it wasn't cynicism, it wasn't just lip service. But Sheva realized that if King Solomon became the king, King David would live forever. And that's what actually happened. King Solomon continued that legacy. If you open a book of Psalms till today and you read it, King David becomes to life. In fact, we say every day, David, Melech, Yisrael, Chai V'Kayom. The King David lives forever. What does it mean he lives forever? That's what Bathsheba was saying. His ideas live forever. He lives through his ideas. That's who we are. And that's what the Rebbe explains. That's why the portion is called Chaye Sarah. Because yes, Sarah physically passes away after the shock of Abraham almost bringing his son as a sacrifice. Sarah passes away. But remember who Sarah was. She was the matriarch of our, of our people and monotheism. She was the one who... who together with Abraham, planted the roots of the land of Eretz Yisrael. But think about what happens in the portion. First we read about Abraham actually buying the first physical piece of land in Hebron. It's the first time they, their vision, their dream comes to reality. And then what happens next? We find a wife for Isaac. Who's the wife? Rebecca. And what does it say about Rebecca? She continues in the ways of her mother-in-law. The miracles that happened for Sarah continued through Rivka. Rivka was pious. She was noble. She carried with her the characteristics, the traits of her dear mother-in-law. So yes, in this week's Torah portion, we read about the passing of Sarah. But really, it's Chaye Sarah. It's the life of Sarah. Because what is her life? Her life is her deeds. It was her vision. It was her dream that Isaac should be the one to carry on monotheism, to carry on the role of being the leader of morality in this world. That's what she begged Abraham when she said Yishma should go away. She wanted her son to have the right education. And in this week's Torah portion, after she passes, that's when it's fulfilled. And that's why we call the portion Chaye Sarah, the life of Sarah. And the same was true with King David. And that's what Bathsheba realized. And that's why we read that Torah this week. Because King David, Bathsheba realized that King David will only continue to live forever if Solomon becomes the king. If Shlomo Melech continues in his passionate and compassionate ways. And the same is really true about Jonathan Sachs, Rabbi, Chief Rabbi, Lord Jonathan Sachs. He passed away yesterday at a young age of 72. But his legacy didn't pass away. He will continue to live through his ideas and through us perpetuating his deeds, his thinking, his thoughts, his, his love for Torah, his love for humanity, his love for civility, his love for people coming together and discussing ideas with tolerance. Yes, we might not always agree, but we always have to respect each other. So I leave you with these words. May we always perpetuate good. May we recognize that life is not just physical. It's about ideas. It's about love for Hashem and love for Judaism. Have a great day. May His memory be a blessing for all of us.